with includes, you can include text and HTML, but you can also include PHP script. So let's go back to our included document here, footer.include.php. And you notice here we got our text, but over here, I declared a variable called secret password. Since we've included the footer.include.php, we've included the variable secret password. So we can now use that in our my page, my underscore page.php. So I'm just going to co copy and paste this here, and I'm going to go print secret password. Everything should work out well. We should see the value of secret password printed to this page, right? Secret password has a value of fish. So I'm going to go back and I'm actually, well, let me just repair this. So let's refresh the page and see what happens. Fish has been printed to the browser. Let's try a little experiment. Let's go back and let's move this statement, this print statement here on top of the include. Let's see what happens. As you can see, fish is no longer being printed. The reason in this situation, the uh, value of uh, being stored in a, in a variable secret password, in this case, it's, it's fish, was not printed to screen. It's because when we called this print statement, calling a print statement, something that nerds say, when we made the print statement here, the file footer.include.php had not yet been included into the page. If you remember, PHP is processed from the top down. So if you ever store variables or other PHP code in external files, you got to remember to include them before you use them in your page, if you understand what I mean. Now that we've actually looked at using PHP code created in, a, in an external sheet and then used it in our current page using the include statement as we just did. This allows me to tell you that it's very common practice in the PHP world for people to create libraries of PHP code that they reuse on many different pages and actually in many different PHP websites. Like one common use would be to create a library, a code library, where you store all your PHP code that's used to connect the databases and you store that in external PHP files and then you just include them in your pages so you don't have to keep on rewriting the same code over and over again. We'll get into this more and more as we get into more advanced PHP and you're going to see how includes are very very important in the context of building dynamic websites with PHP. Another thing I want to point out is that Include statements can include any type of text document. In this case, I'm including a PHP document, and there's a reason for that, which I'll get into, but I could just as easily include a simple text document like this, which is a TXT, or an HTML page, a document with a .html on it. It doesn't really matter. PHP will accept that. The reason, though, I like to include PHP pages is number one is that by including by creating your include files as PHP pages, it adds uh, extra security to your site. Let me give you an example. A lot of people will keep their database password information, which is obviously information you don't want the public to see, in external include files so that they can reuse it on many pages, as I stated before. So. If you, if you store this information in a PHP page, it's much more difficult for people to be able to get access to that information because before any PHP code, as you know, is sent out to the browser, it's processed. So if you have PHP code, like the print secret password, or you create, you create a bunch of variables with all your password information, these variables will not be printed onto the screen, right? Whereas if you kept it in a TXT file or an HTML file and a hacker was smart enough, he could use, just use the browser and download that file. I'm not going to show you how, to, how's it, how that's done. Many of you have probably figured it out already. The point is, I would suggest that you make all your include files PHP documents because A, it's much more secure, and B, you can, well, 
that's actually really all that's all that's important because anyway it's really a, it's a security issue and so when you're making includes make them PHP files let's discuss a little bit more about the paths to your PHP include files as we stated before right here you notice I'm basically pointing to a PHP file that's on the same level same directory as my as the PHP page that's actually going to include this file. It works fine, but if you have to, if you start changing your site structure for whatever reasons or you're moving files around, let's say you decide to put your PHP includes in an include folder and then all of a sudden you're going to have to go to all your include uh, statements and all your PHP pages and change it to say something like this, for instance, right? PHP offers a capability to get around that, it basically has a default include directory where it searches first for any include files. This is something that you probably not have any control of, but maybe you'll be able to use it depending on how your hosting company sets it up. Instead of bothering your hosting company, you can just figure this out yourself by using the handy PHP info function that we've looked at in the past. So let me just insert that on top here. So I'm going to go PHP info. And if you recall, PHP info is a built in mini program, if you will, of a function. That's, a, that's actually a function. That's what they're called. You can think of functions as a program in a program. Anyway. PHP info gives you all kinds of information about your current PHP installation. It tells you about the PHP and how it's set up on the computer that you happen to be using. So let's, uh, since I put this up, I put this in now, let's take a look at what we can find out from PHP info. Here's our PHP info page. Now what we want to look for is actually this, the include path meaning the include files default path. And on this machine, on this server, which is the local host server, right? The 127.001, it's actually in C PHP 5 pair. Let's navigate to C PHP 5 pair. We'll see the folder. So we're in C PHP 5 pair. And we see in here, I've already put in a PHP page that I'm gonna use as an include file and uh, note the name footer.include underscore two dot php let's pop her open it's pretty much the same except uh, i added the uh, words and beyond and i s created a new variable called secret password underscore two and i gave it a value of fish is tasty so let's go back to our php code and if we sc scroll down I put it in already for us in this PHP code block here. So you notice uh, footer.include2.php and I tell it to print the secret password 2. Remember, secret password 2 does not exist in our other footer include file. So what I'm showing you here is how we can include many different files, literally as many files as we want into a single PHP page. And you notice that the text is different here in footer include.php. Last thing I want to point out before we actually take a look at the page is that you notice that in the root of the actual website, nowhere can we find footer.include underscore two.php. So that proves that if this works, it works because we were in, because the uh, PHP engine rather picked it up in the PHP 5 slash pair directory. So let's take a look at the page in our browser. First of all, I'm going to remove this PHP info function so we don't have this whole display here, which takes up a lot of space. So let's go back into our main page. I'll scroll up a little bit. PHP info, delete that, hit save. And we're going to go back into our page. There we go. This is the second include file. And of course, the new variable, fish is tasty. This was printed there because I said print secret password two. Let's take a look at a, a live site that I'm actually using uh, PHP include statements quite uh, effectively. Uh, this is a template site. And what we're gonna show you is that 
this whole sidebar here is actually include file, all this stuff here, and so is this area here. So let's um, let's look at the actual code that's used for that page. You're going to notice that I have an include file here, PHP include top menu. So that corresponds to this top menu here. And then I have a PHP include side menu, which inserts all this here. So let's pop open now the actual include files and let's just look at side menu. You see side menu has all my menu text and so even some JavaScript and uh, some commented out JavaScript or PHP actually. Let me explain something. When I, I said commented out, you notice there's this forward slash star, there's a bunch of code and then it ends off with a star forward slash. This is a block called a comment block. Comments in every programming language, just about every programming language I know of, uses something called comments. Comments are basically code in your PHP that is ignored by the PHP engine. When the PHP engine sees this combination, the slash and the star, it knows that anything after this and before this, so basically anything in between these two codes, the, the slash star and the star slash down here, is to be ignored by the engine. They are referred to as comments because typically programmers will leave notes in here like to themselves or for other programmers about the script so that they know what's going on a few months from now or a few years from now. I'm going to have a video just on comments, but now I figure I should just mention since I mentioned comments. So these are just PHP comments. Essentially, I have this block of code here that I decided that I didn't want displayed on the page or processed, so I just commented it out. I wanted to show you an actual live imp implementation where I was using PHP includes in a very common way because the sidebar is something consistent on many pages on the site, so is the top menu. So and that's why and the footer actually is as well. So that's why I decided to make includes out of them to extract them into separate files. So I got footer, side menu, top menu. And now if I decide to change my top menu, if I add new pages to the site or I remove pages or I want to change my footer, instead of having to change them in all these separate pages, all I have to do is go to this one file, make the changes, and it cascades throughout the rest of the site.